In this supplementary video, we cover something known as the successive squaring algorithm. You do need to be familiar, however, with complete residue systems and how to write integers in different bases. Here's the problem we want to learn how to solve quickly and effectively. What's the remainder when a to the k is divided by b? Equivalently, what is an element of the standard complete residue system modulo b satisfying a to the k is equivalent to c modulo b? That will also be the remainder when divided by b. Now, if a, b, and k are fairly small, we can just do this computation by hand. We're going to recursively compute powers of a and resolve them modulo b. So let's compute the remainder when 3 to the 8th is divided by 13. In other words, what is 3 to the 8th equivalent to modulo 13? We're just going to keep multiplying by 3 over and over again. And I have a bunch of equivalences, they're all mod 13. Well, 3 to the first is 3. 3 squared is the previous power times 3, so 9. 3 cubed is the previous power times 3, so 27. But I resolve this mod 13, and 27 is equivalent to 1. Well then, 3 to the fourth is the previous power times 3. The previous power was 1. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 to the 5th is the previous power times 3. The previous power was also 3, so 3 times 3 is 9. 3 to the 6th is the previous power times 3. The previous power had been computed to be equivalent to 9. 9 times 3 is 27, which is equivalent to 1. 3 to the 7th is the previous power times 3. The previous power was equivalent to 1, and 1 times 3 is 3. 3 to the 8th is the previous power times 3. The previous power was equivalent to 3, and 3 times 3 is equivalent to 9. So ultimately, 3 to the 8th was equivalent to 9. There is an element of the standard complete residue system mod 13, so that's the remainder. So it wasn't that bad to do by hand because the power and the base were not all that large. Also, we've seen in other problems that patterns can arise in the powers. 3, 9, 1, 3, 9, 1, 3, 9, and it would keep going according to this. But things can, unfortunately, get a little unpleasant. What if we were working with larger numbers? Specifically, all of the numbers are going to be pretty large. So can we compute the remainder when 153 to the 38,921st power is divided by uh, 267,532,137? Even with a calculator helping us, the recursive procedure would take a very long time. Multiply by 153 reduce mod 267,532,137. Do that again, and in fact, do it 38,921 times. That'd be really tedious. The successive squaring algorithm that we're going to introduce now will greatly speed up the process of exponentiation modulo b. It relies on the following observation. Suppose I have already raised a number to a power, and that power is a power of 2. So I have a to a power, and that power is 2 to the k. If I square that number, well, squaring is exponentiating to the second power. Now I have one power to another power, so I can multiply those powers together. But 2 times 2 to the k is 2 to the k plus 1. So if you have computed a to a power, and that power is itself a power of 2, and you square it, what you've really done is computed a to the next power of 2 as a power. So any time I have a number to a power that is itself a power of 2 and I square it, I get the next power of 2 as my exponent. Also, a itself is just a to the first. That's a to the 2 to the 0. But if I happen to know the value of a to the 2 to the k and that's y, computing the next thing is actually just a matter of squaring y. y times y is a single multiplication, so squaring this thing is actually just one step of multiplication. So now, suppose I know the value of these various things. If I multiply these four things together, which is just a couple steps of multiplication, well, what I would end up doing is adding the exponents together. So we can obtain a large exponent here by doing some very simple things over and over again. Square a, then square that, then square that, and so forth. What I end up generating are a to a power of 2 power. By squaring it, I'll get the next power of 2. 
power. So I keep doing this, I can quickly generate a to powers where those powers are powers of two. By multiplying some of those things together, I can recover large exponents. So now we're going to present a flowchart algorithm to compute the remainder when a to the k is divided by b. Equivalently, what element of the standard complete residue system mod b is a to the k equivalent to? No big surprise, we start by inputting a, k, and b. Now the first thing we do is we take the exponent k and we find its base 2 representation. So right here I have the binary representation of the exponent k. Now n is specifically referring at this point to the power of 2, which is the largest power of 2 used in the, ex in the binary representation of the exponent. So if 2 to the n was the largest power of 2 used in this binary representation, that's what n now specifically refers to. I now start a counter by declaring it at 0 and I enter into this loop. As long as my counter has not gotten up to, has not passed, sorry, the largest power of 2 used here, I do this loop. I declare a sub i to be a mod b. I increase my counter and I square a and I replace that as my value of a. So I keep doing this. So notice that since my counter is increasing, I'm getting new a sub i's. First it was a sub 0, but next it'll be a sub 1, then a sub 2, and so forth. What value does it take depending on how many times I've performed this squaring? So a sub 0 has no squarings. a sub 1, I'll have squared once. a sub 2, I'll have squared twice. a sub 3, I'll have squared four times, and so forth. I'm not computing a cubed, a to the fourth, a to the fifth. I am squaring over and over again. But eventually, my counter will in fact be larger than n, at which point I reset my counter to zero and I declare a new placeholder x. x will ultimately be our output, and we start with a kind of basic value of one. So now, <clears throat> is my counter still less or equal to this n, which was the index of the final power of 2 used in my binary representation of the exponent. As long as that's still true, I ask, is ki equal to 1? ki being the digits in the binary expansion. If ki is equal to 1, then what I do is I take my, va my value x and I multiply it by a sub i. These were the a sub i's that were stored back here. Okay, if ki isn't 1, then it must be 0, and I simply skip that step. But either way, I end up increasing my counter and asking again, have I accounted for all of the digits in the binary expansion? Okay, as long as i is sufficiently small, then I haven't. So I ask, was the digit in the binary expansion 1? If so, multiply by ai. If not, don't. Either way, increase the counter and try again. Well, since my counter keeps increasing, eventually i is going to be bigger than n at which point I output x and I'm done. So here's the successive squaring algorithm in entirety. Let's work through an example to get our hands around this algorithm. In short, how does it work? Convert the exponent into binary, square the number a as many times as there are digits in the binary expansion. I'm not saying multiply a against itself, I'm saying square it this many times. Then, of all the terms you generated, multiply together the ones that correspond to non-zero digits in the exponent. So for example, let's do 3 to the 9th mod 11. Our exponent is 9, we convert it into binary. It's one copy of 2 cubed, no 2 squareds, no 2 to the firsts, and 1 2 to the 0. Now we begin with our number a, which is 3. Now 3 is just 3 to the first, in other words, it's 3 to the 2 to the 0. That corresponds to this term in the exponent, 2 to the 0. If I square it, I'll get my 2 to the first term. If I square that, I'll get my 2 squared term. And if I square that, I'll get my 2 cubed term. So I have to square, square, square. I have to square three times, corresponding to 3 being the largest power of 2 that appeared in this exponent. So I square once. My original value of, was 3, so I get 3 squared. That's 9. Now I don't multiply by 3, I square. If I square 9, I get 81. Mod 11, that's 4. So that's going to correspond to 3 to the 2 to the 1st squared, or 3 to the 2 to the 2nd. So now I have 4 corresponding to this digit, 0. I square again, 
3 to the 2 to the second squared is just 3 to the 2 cubed, but 3 to the 2 to the second was 4. So when I square 4, I get 16, but mod 11, that's 5. That now corresponds to this digit here. Since I've done three squarings, I've gotten up to 2 cubed, and I'm done. What I do now is for my terms, 3, 9, 4, and 5, I multiply together the ones that correspond to non-zero digits. 3 to the 2 to the 0 and 3 to the 2 cubed were my non-zero digits in this expansion. 2 to the 0, not 2 to the first, not 2 squared, but yes, 2 cubed. So I look for my terms corresponding to 2 to the 0 and 2 cubed. 3 and 5, and I multiply those together. So here's what we've done. Okay, 3 to the 9th, well 9 was 2 cubed plus 2 to the 0. 3 to one thing plus another is 3 to the first times 3 to the other, and we know the value of 3 to the 2 cubed, it's equivalent to 5 mod 11, and 3 to the 2 to the 0 was equivalent to 3 mod 11. So this is equivalent to 5 times 3, or 15, but mod 11, that's just 4. So overall, 3 to the 9th is equivalent to 4 modulo 11. Let's do a longer example to get more comfortable running this. Let's compute 21 to the 38th power mod 101. First step, convert the exponent into binary. That exponent of 38 is just 32 plus 6, or 32 plus 4 plus 2. 2 to the fifth, 2 squared, 2 to the first. So there is the binary representation of 38. Now that last digit of 0 corresponds to 2 to the 0. We begin with 21. 21 is, two to the, is 21 to the first, which is 21 to the 2 to the 0 power. Now if I square that, I'll get 21 to the 2 to the first. Whatever number that is, if I square that, I'll get 21 to the 2 to the second. Whatever number that is, I square that, I'll get 21 to the 2 cubed. I keep doing that until I work up to 2 to the fifth. So I'm going to keep squaring whatever number I have, and I'm going to reduce mod 101. So we begin with 21 to the first power, or 21 to the 2 to the 0. That's just where we start. Now I square once. 21 squared is 441, but modulo 101, that's 37. If I square again, I'm not multiplying by 21, I am squaring, and I have at this point the number 37. 37 squared is 1369, which is equivalent mod 101 to 56. I square again, I get 3136, but that's equivalent to 5. I square again, I just get 25, there's no reducing mod 101 to do. I square again, I get 625, mod 101, that's equivalent to 19. And now, every time I square, that's the same number, or equivalent mod 101 at least, as 21 to 2 to a higher power. So we started with 21 to the first, or 21 to the 2 to the 0. By squaring, I get up to 21 to the 2 to the first. By squaring, I get up to 21 to the 2 to the second. I square, I square, I square. Now 2 to the fifth is the largest power of 2 that I need to recover the exponent, so I'm done with my successive squaring. I multiply together the terms corresponding to the non-zero digits in the exponent. 2 to the fifth, 2 squared, 2 to the first. The 2 to the fifth term is 19, the 2 squared term is 56, the 2 to the first term is 37. So I just have to multiply together 19 times 56 times 37. That's 39,368, which I can reduce mod 101 to 79. So ultimately, 21 to the 38th is equivalent to 79 modulo 101. Now, this algorithm feels very intimidating at first, but it's a lot less work than multiplying 21 by 21 by 21 by 21 and doing that 38 times. We only had to do five basic operations of squaring. So let's talk about this algorithm. So later on, we'll see why we care about computing a to the k mod b. Okay, it's very central in how modern cryptography works to be able to perform this computation pretty quickly. In practice, the numbers aren't just big, they're extremely big. The base b will typically have thousands of digits and the numbers a and k are comparably big. So a brute force approach could be executed on a computer to compute 28, 21 to the 38th mod 101. 21 to the 38th is this number here. A computer was able to generate it for me. And then I could reduce this mod 101, I guess. But even a computer cannot directly compute something like this. Okay, these numbers are just way too big for a computer to work with. Okay, typical software is just not going to be able to store numbers big enough to compute this. And these numbers that I wrote don't even have hundreds of digits. Okay, they have tens of digits. 
but typically in modern cryptography, the numbers we're working with are literally thousands of digits long. There's no way for a computer to just multiply that number against itself, against itself many, many times without exceeding its bounds of computation. So for numbers that big, it's just not going to work. Even if it did, it would be incredibly slow. Because how many times do you have to do the multiplication? Well, it depends how big the exponent is. And if the exponent is a number that isn't just this big, but it's like thousands of digits long, that many distinct steps of multiplication is going to be incredibly slow to execute. Successive squaring, however, replaces the exponent with the number of digits in its binary expansion. That's how many multiplications you have to do. Instead of the exponent itself, instead of doing, for example, 38 different multiplications, we only had to do five different squarings because the binary expansion of the exponent had five digits. So instead of doing k different operations, we basically have to do the logarithm of k operations, which is a much, much, much smaller number once numbers get large. So the successive squaring operation is incredibly much faster than trying to just do it by brute force. It's also, by the way, a very commonly used algorithm in how these sorts of things are actually computed. So practical advice, use the successive squaring algorithm if you are coding how to compute these exponents.